Hi, I'd like to welcome all of you to today's webinar for Adapt Builder. Um, just a few uh, comments before we begin. Uh, first of all, my name is Spencer Lee. I'm um, Technical Director with Adapt. And uh, today's uh, webinar will will be discussing the Adapt Builder to to adapt or excuse me the E tabs to Adapt Builder integration console, and mainly outline the workflow and the process um, with how E tabs models are transferred over to Adapt Builder, um, and kind of show a few of the workflows that can be um, used when. Uh, or after importing the eTabs model to Builder. Um, just a few announcements. The, the video today will be put on our YouTube channel. So if you visit uh, youtube.com slash ADAPT support, um, you can go to the ADAPT webinars playlist and we put all of the uh, webinars on that playlist, the recordings of the, of the webinars. So you can rewatch at your own pace. Also, if you do um, need a, a PDH certificate for today's webinar, please send a request to support at adaptsoft.com and we would be happy to issue a certificate for one uh, PDH hour. And also for um, questions, we'll have a Q&A, just a brief Q&A towards the end of the meeting. Um, we ask that you reserve any questions that may not um, uh, pertain to this particular topic. If you can just uh, set those aside and, and submit questions, um, uh, other questions rather, to support at adaptsoft.com. We'd be happy to answer those uh, in that format. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, the, the Adapt Integration Console, just a little bit of history, is a tool that's been around for, for several years. Um, it's It's been modified in the last two to three years um, and currently we're on adapt IC version 6. Um, in the past the, the the integration console was compatible with um, eTabs version 9 and the process if you've ever used that version of the integration console the process is is different um, with the release of, of newer versions of eTabs and their API we're able to to automate some of the the data that's having to be written uh, from eTabs to to adapt and and we do that through use of their their API and through the integration console tool. So um, today's example that we'll cover is a multi-story building. It's fairly simple. It's it's not overly complex. We we need to have something that we can manage um, given the time allotted here. So it is a multi-story structure. It's been run and analyzed in eTabs. We're using eTabs 16 uh, version 16.03. Um, You'll note just a couple of uh, items to review inside of the eTabs model, that mainly re related to the load cases or load patterns. You'll see that in this model, we have just general gravity loads, dead, live, self-weight. And then there's just a couple of wind loads and a couple of um, seismic loads, wind X, wind Y, EQX, and EQY. These are defined. Um, with their types wind and seismic, and they're generated using ASC 705. So um, all of the the lateral loads in this case are static lateral, and that's essentially what the program or the integration console currently supports um, in terms of uh, lateral loading. So we'll go ahead and cancel that. You'll notice also if we go up to load combinations, we have just a few combinations listed here that include um, combined effects and isolated effects of the lateral and then combined effects of gravity and lateral. So we're going to import not only the load cases, but we're also going to import the uh, load combinations. By default, when we use the integration console, and let me go ahead and open uh, that tool. So we'll go to integration console. You'll see this is V6. The integration console has multiple options. We have the option for ETAB 16 integration, 15 integration, the um, the legacy version, which was just called Adapt IC. There was actually no version number associated with it. That supported ETABs version 9. So that's using input and output text files to generate the, the data. Uh, the, the process itself looks quite a bit different if you were ever to, to use that version. And then we also support some integration with STAD. Um, the, the integration console by default will import geometry and or 
applied loads and reactions. So if you just simply want to import the, the geometry, uh, basically a model from eTabs to Builder, you can use a tool. You can carry it um, further than that, though. You can, you can also import reactions. So if you have a solved model in eTabs, and let's say you have maybe the objective of, of um, designing columns or, or being able to use those reactions from eTabs to process a foundation mat inside of a DAP Builder, you can use the reactions that stem from eTabs inside of Builder. You, in other words, you're not required necessarily to use the forces and all of the reactions that are generated from a from an adapt builder analysis solution. Um, and and then the third third thing along with that is um, the ability to import applied loads, applied lateral loads, um, and also gravity loads. By default, gravity loads are are uh, imported, but you have to take an extra step in order to generate the applied lateral loads that can be brought into to Builder. And I'll, I'll show you where those are stored and how they can be accessed inside of Builder. So one, one other thing that we want to show, however, inside of, uh, inside of eTabs is in order to um, transfer the applied lateral loads from eTabs to Builder, we have to generate a file. And the file that we generate after we've run the analysis for the eTabs model we're going to select um, export XML. So this is a, a story force file. We'll go to analysis, results, uh, structural results, and we want to select story forces. And if we select OK, we will we'll basically create this XML file and just set it to the side. We'll save it in some location. So I've already done this. I've created an XML file for this model. And again, the only purpose for that file is to be able to import um, applied lateral loads. If you don't select the file, then you will import geometry and reactions only, not applied lateral loads, and also applied gravity loads as well. So um, let's go ahead and close eTabs. And one of the prerequisites to um, using this integration tool, you have to have a, an active license that's that's available when you run the, the console. So the program will launch eTabs and then close it during the process of using this. So we'll select eTabs 16 and say next. And this additional window will appear. And we're going to first select which um, eTabs EDB file we want to import. So we'll go to Browse. And I'm calling this Webinar Adapt eTabs. We'll just select that. And I'll first load the model. So when we load the model, eTabs will launch. The program will access the, the data needed to, to write the geometry and applied gravity loads. And then the, the program will close. So this, this may take a few minutes if you have a really large, complex eTabs model. But that's done. Um, if you're interested in only importing one particular level of an eTabs model, Maybe it's the bottom level, and you just simply need the reactions at the bottom plane, and then you want to import those into a into a mat, for example, inside a builder. You can select which level you wish to import using this this um, pull down list. So in this case, we're going to import the entire structure. Um, we also want the ability to import the applied lateral loads. So this is this is where that XML file comes into play. And we'll go ahead and just select the option to import the XML file. I'll browse for the file. This is where I save that file. And I'll just click that. Now that we have both of these two files loaded, we're going to create the adapt IMP file. And this file format is our generic uh, file format. It's used not only for eTabs integration. We use it for Revit integration. We recently um, uh, it worked with uh, Tecla structure to um, be able to export Tecla uh, structural designer models to adapt. So if you have a TSD model that maybe you want to design with post-tensioning, you can use this integration tool inside of that program, which will also write an IMP file, and, and you could import that into Builder to, to do post-tensioning design. So it's just a, a global kind of adapt a global format that we use for integration with multiple platforms. And this process can take, you know, a few seconds up to several minutes, again, depending on the size of the file. So here we've 
successfully written that IMP file, I'll just go ahead and close these, these tools. And I'm now going to launch Builder. Now, during the course of this webinar, we're going to investigate a couple of uh, two or three different workflows. First is we want to be able to um, we want to be able to take the reactions that were solved for in eTabs and be able to just process the design of a mat using those reactions without even analyzing the global analysis or the, the frame globally inside of Builder. The second workflow is the ability for us to design a column inside of Builder with eTabs reactions versus adapt reactions. We, we, we necessarily don't advocate that, but again, th there's multiple purposes for needing the eTabs model you know, to, to be imported into Builder. And this, these are a couple of different workflows that, um, that can be used. And, and then third is the ability to reanalyze the global frame inside of Builder using Builder's frame solver, but using the applied lateral loads from uh, from eTabs and also the, the imported gravity loads from eTabs. So in order to do all those things inside of this instance in Builder, we're going to have to um, select the, the proper settings here. So first, in order to, to model, or excuse me, in order to, to analyze a global frame in Builder, we have to have Edge selected. That's essentially the frame solver in Builder. And then also, <clears throat> we're gonna have Floor Pro selected this just gives us the ability really to design um, either a mat or an elevated slab. So mat, mat is specific to, to mats. There's a, there's a few differences be, between mat and floor pro. The, the biggest difference between the two really when, when they are used in conjunction with edge is that when you're in floor pro and edge and you analyze a frame globally in adapt builder, and then let's say you want to go back and re reanalyze the the mat with the reactions from the frame analysis. The program only allows you to use the vertical load, uh, the, the vertical reactions FZ forces. If you are in mat and you do the same thing, you run the entire frame. We'll just use this as an example, and we have a mat at the base, and we go to that individual plane, and we want to reanalyze that single level mat rather than only being able to select axial loads for the reactions, we can actually select moments, all, all gravity reactions, moments, shears, and axial forces. So that's the main difference between Floor Pro and <clears throat> Edge when we, when we reanalyze um, uh, a mat slab in conjunction with a multiple story model. Um, we'll go ahead and say OK. And we're now inside of Adapt Builder. First thing we want to do is import the, the file that was just created, the IMP file that we created from ETAP. So we'll go here to import generic adapt file. You'll notice if, if you're used to some older versions of adapt, this used to be more explicit. It would say Revit or ETABs or, you know, I think we had robot as an option several years ago, but um, now everything is just stored under generic adapt file because it's been broadened to handle all different platforms that we integrate with. So you'll select generic adapt file. I'll select this IMP file that I had saved. <clears throat> and we now get the import options dialog menu. Now, this menu would also give you the ability to import only one level. In the, in the integration console, we had the pull down list that allowed us to select a single level. You can basically do the same thing here. If, if you if you export all levels and then you come into the import options, you could say, well, I just want to import story 14, for example. If you do that, these component options would become available. You have the ability to turn off, to deselect, or select the components specific to that reference plane. Um, and those components are slabs, and or beams that are referenced from that plane that could also include drop panels, drop caps, and so on. And it also includes the supports above and below the slab. So it could be columns and walls above or the same below. Um, if you choose all, 
everything is grayed out. You, you don't have the ability to, to select and uh, sort what you want uh, or maybe what you don't want to be imported. So, so that's, this limits what can happen when all is selected. In this case, we want to select all the slabs. So obviously we're going to use all. And if slabs being exported and then imported from eTabs are of the same thickness and the same material assignment, they can be merged. So if you have, let's say in eTabs, you've done some manual meshing and you're generating basically your own shell elements um, inside of that program and you have you know 200 shells on one level, importing that one-to-one -to, -one to Builder becomes a little bit um, tricky in, in the sense that you have to manage all of those individual slab elements and you also have to manage all of the individual loads that are imported. So one way to bypass at least managing the, the slab component itself is to merge the slabs when we import and that's defaulted to here. So the next thing we'll look at are the loads and the load cases. Um, we are going to import everything. We, we will not be importing modal or this spec spec one max so we're going to limit this to gravity and then just the lateral um, cases wind and and eqx eqy also we're, we're going to allow builder to solve the um the, the self-weight case you you can import self-weight as a, a load case from from etabs but it has to be converted into a dead load so you'll see here it's self-weight um, when we import it into ADAPT, we can't have duplicate self-weight load cases. By default, ADAPT already creates a load case called self-weight. So in this case, I would probably want to convert this over to dead load and then you know, say, well, I just want reactions only, for example. Um, however, if you want ADAPT to manage the calculation automatically of the self-weight, if we're going to reanalyze the frame, then I would just choose to not import this particular load case. So we'll, we'll set that to none. For dead load, we're going to uh, uh, import the applied forces and the reactions. We'll do the same for all of the, all of the other load cases. So for Windex, we'll tag this as wind. Wind Y, we'll say that's also wind. Um, for seismic, we'll use the seismic tag. And then for um, each of those, we're going to apply uh, select applied force and reactions and you can see there's there's additional options there you could import only the applied forces the reactions only or if if we only want to import geometry we would select none to all of these load cases so we'll go ahead and finish that list now when we uh, when we import the applied loads for um, wind and earthquake we have the ability to assign uh, eccentricity to those imported loads. And right now the default is five. I'll show you where you can modify that and, and customize it inside of Builder. But for now, we're just carrying over this assignment to those applied lateral loads on, uh, upon import. The load combinations, we'll just import all. And then we can go ahead and select OK. And the program will will build the the file. Now you'll notice, you'll see that all of my gravity loads are actually based on panels. They're essentially a bunch of square uniform loads, and that's how I modeled those loads inside of eTabs. So I modeled multiple slab regions between columns. Basically, a shell was a panel in that case, and the loads were then assigned to each one of those panels. So they they come into Builder as um, separate load entities, if you will. So let's go ahead and do some navigation here inside of Builder. So for, first, if I just look at a global view of this, this is the model that was imported into Builder. Th this is a pretty clean model. We strategically set the model up so we wouldn't have, obviously, many issues with the connectivity and being able to um, show this model. But th this model essentially is a one-to-one -one map of what we had inside of ETABs and this model runs. We've tested it. It, it performs well inside of Builder. Um, for loads, under loading, load case library, by default, ADAPT stores 
reserved load cases and two of those reserved load cases are dead load and live load well we already had those defined in etabs and those were called dead and live so now as a user we have to make a choice do we want to do we want to just abandon the reserve load cases and in, in adapt or do we want to convert the dead and live loads over to the native dead and live inside of builder so in this case we're going to because i imported load combinations that already include dead and live we need the uh, we need to be able to just keep these in place so i'm actually going to just deselect this and i'll also deselect that and i'll i'll deselect pre-stressing as well there's no post tensioning for this model and we're left only with these two cases so that helps clean up the load combination list when we go and look at load combinations and potentially add new factors or add new load combinations um, in in our list the building loads are shown here so this is windex windy eqx eqy inside of adapt builder building loads are only solved for when we are working in what we call global mode so the difference between i'll come back to this input in just a moment the difference between global and single level mode not only represents what you're looking at graphically for example if i go to the story manager toolbar the two last options are single level and full structure full structure will show everything it, everything is active um, and if i was to analyze this structure the program would consider anything that's shown and regarded or considered for the analysis so here we would end up analyzing a full multi-story frame if i go to single level and I'll just navigate to level 14 again. I'll set that as active. Let, let's say I wanted to know what the deflections were just under gravity loads on this level individually uh, and aside from all of the other levels, I could quickly transfer over to single level mode and run the analysis for this level. And by doing this, I have the ability to run it in two different modes interchangeably in the same instance of the program. So the, the point I was making was building load cases, which are the wind and the seismic, are never solved for when you're running single level. They can be accessed, the reactions from those load cases can be accessed when we run single level if there's a global solution in place. But by default, we don't, we, let's assume there's a story force on this level of 300 kips from seismic. We don't we don't we'll never have the the user would never have the opportunity to actually run the level with that 300 kip load um in this particular instance because it, it doesn't apply number one and and number two you just simply wouldn't be able to access that data because we lock it out when you're in single level mode so that's the the difference between the two so one other thing that i'll show there under load case library is you'll notice that we tag these these wind and seismic loads. So when we when we set the type of load it is inside of that import options dialog menu, that carries over here under wind and seismic, and that's necessary for classifying the loads and being able to um, do the column design. It, it the reason it's there is really for column design, and we use. Uh, S concrete is our column design module, so we have to be able to isolate the two load load case types. Okay, so we have um, loads on this building. If I wanted to view the loads, I could go into the select set view items, for example, and you'll notice if I turn on point loads, these don't become active. And here we're actually looking at gravity loads, not lateral. Line loads, there's nothing active. Patch loads. We have dead load. This is superimposed dead load. And you'll notice, for example, if I, let me turn off the beam so I can see that more clearly. it will isolate the, the walls and columns also. So if I look at this particular load that's been assigned at this top level, this is called patch load three. It's a dead load. The magnitude is shown here. And you know every one of these loads that has been imported has some classification as to the load type the load label and, and so on so if you ever want to view and, and revise those loads they're they're completely editable at this point i could change this you know to 0 0.05 
if I wanted to globally change all of my dead load inside a builder, I could do that. I could select by type all of the patch loads in view. That's going to select all of them. And then I can go in and just modify under, um, this is actually modify, modify item properties because we've selected more than one component. I'm changing more than one thing. Um, if I go to patch load here, I could modify the load input. So you always have the ability to modify what's been imported in terms of the applied loads. Okay, and for for lateral loads, the applied lateral loads, those are stored in a different um, dialog. So if we go to loading and I select add load and I look at the lateral load uh, input, this is the generic lateral load uh, input table. So if we go to this option, you'll notice that if I select update existing load case, the four building loads, WindX, WindY, EQX, and EQY are stored in this table. And if I, for example, select EQX, this will show me all of the reference planes, the height to that reference plane, the width, eccentricity based on this value and the story force. And you'll notice there's actually a story force missing here. I, I don't know <laughs> why or why that's happening, but I'll just add something in there. Again, we can we can override this if needed. And this lists the story forces that were imported from uh, ETABs. And the, the same thing can be done for EQY. You'll notice the direction changes. And then we have our list of forces here. So how do we reapply these forces to the structure? Well, at this point, these are simply just classified as lateral loads inside a builder. Therefore, they can be solved for if they're included in combinations. And, and it also requires us to actually solve and run. We have to first mesh the structure and then run the finite element engine to solve the, the problem in this case. Um, the, the question would be, well, how does the program distribute this force? How is it how is it applied to the structure? And the, the best way to describe this is if I can, if, I'll, I'll go ahead and use a, a highlighter here. Let me exit out really quick and give me some white space. So if, if we have a slab, and I'll just simplify this, we have a, a square slab. And let's let's assume that we have a shear wall here and here, and we're going to look at a load in the x direction. So center of mass and center of rigidity, let's assume we're at the same location. We have a force here, and I'll just call it F, um, Fx. And the program, when it when when we assign these forces, and by you know automatically those were all assigned in that table that I just showed you, the program will then mesh this the, the program meshes the slab that's just the general mesh that we we can create so let's assume we have a, a shell right here and let's assume that the shell has a node here a node here a node here and here and there's other shells throughout the slab but we have node one node two three and four and this shell element has a mass i'll just call it mass one and then two three four throughout the remainder of the shells. So the program determines the the mass of shell one and it divides this by the sum of the mass and that includes the attachment of the columns and walls above and below half the height of each. And we take this ratio and we multiply that ratio by F, uh, Fx and that's going to, I'll call this F1, let's say. So each node has some portion of this total FX applied at its location. And if you have eccentricity, maybe it's 5%. Here's the E that we're dealing with. We also have some moment or torsion, uh, you know, acting on the building out of uh, about the Z axis. And so the portion of that moment also gets applied to each node. So the solution of the lateral load cases, when we resolve these inside a builder, is based on this ratio of independent shell mass over total mass of a floor. And so the total mass, um, the, the user determines, well, what, what mass applies? Is it a self-weight? Is it dead load? Is it a portion of the dead load? And 
that's up to the user. By default, we allow the, the, the program only includes self-weight, but the user can modify that. So if you go back to the lateral load input table, there's a seismic mass. Here it says seismic, but in the general sense, we, for all of these load cases that are, that are assigned to this general input, all of them would be uh, broken out into nodal loads like I just described, and it's a function of this, this equation in terms of the mass. So, um, and here, you know, you can change it to wind or seismic and assign it to either or. So, so this is how the program handles those loads. The user is not required to reanalyze the structure with those loads. Right now, the next thing I'll show you is that we have reactions already in all of the components, the vertical components stemming from the ETAB solution. So, um, First thing I'll do is look at the the walls. I'm just going to isolate the walls here, and let me see if I can rotate that. Okay, that maybe a little bit more right there. Okay, so if I go to the result display settings, you'll notice that the the combination list is blank, and the reason it's blank is because I have yet to solve the the frame for any solution inside of Builder. I haven't even meshed this model yet. So um, th this is blank. So we can't access any combination results because we don't have any at this point. But the load case pull down menu is active. And if I go here to the load case menu, I have a dead load solution for ETABs, global, EQX, Y, Live, Wind, and Windex, and WindY. So there's there's already reactions that have been imported from ETABs. For example, if I look at WindX, and let's go to Wall Load Case Diagrams, not, not combination, that's not available because I don't have anything solved, but this is Load Cases, Windex, the source of the Load Cases ETABs, and let's just look at Shear Long R. And you can see that for wind X, the frame results inside of these wall components that were imported from ETABs are shown. Th those are stored internally inside of Builder. And you can graphically represent those. If, if I look at shear S, you can see there's very little value because it's, there's no, let's say <laughs> shear S is, is uh, for these walls is in the, transverse direction and we have the wrong load case here but if I change this to wind Y for example and I switch this back to R you're gonna see the load in these perpendicular walls here so so the reactions are there we have shear moments um, moments in walls I, I can look at axial force in the walls based on these different load cases that were imported from ETABs in terms of wall design you could actually design adapt walls. You you could design walls, I should say, in adapt using these reactions. So the program gives you the ability to access what source you want to use in terms of the reaction for the design of different components, whether it's walls or columns. Okay, and the same thing happens for for uh, gravity. Like if I look at dead load, for example, and the, these are the axial forces in the walls based on the solution in ETABs for dead load. The same thing can be done for columns. If we turn on the columns and I go back to my column design uh, branch here and I look at the load cases for axial, I'm looking at the dead loads for the columns due to the ETAB solution. Okay, so so the question might be, well, where where is this useful? It's nice that we can see this, but where do we where do we use it? Well, we can use it. Let, let's give you one use case for for these for these reactions. Let's say that I want to design a mat foundation. So I'll go ahead and I'll set this to to the base, and I'll go back to my plan view, and I'll just input some some mat here. We'll just go ahead and. I'm going to use my orthogonal tool to align this somewhat. Um, oops, I X'd out. Sorry about that. 
Okay, so there's our there's our mat. This mat we're gonna say is 28 inches thick. And the default material property will be used. This is 4,000 PSI concrete. And then I wanna add an area spring. So we'll go here to springs, or I could add point or line springs. It, um, in this case, we'll use an area spring. And for that spring, I'm gonna assign a compression only spring. And I wanna add a KXA value and a KYA just to restrain the, the thing laterally so we don't get an instability. And we have a KZ. So this is 100 pounds per, per cubic inch for our subgrade modulus in the, in the Z direction and then something really high uh, for for the X and the Y. So so we define our, our mat. Th this is basically what our mat looks like currently. And we're now going to, we're, we're now going to analyze the mat with the ETABS reactions. So you can see I, I haven't even run the ADAPT model, the global model. I'm just accessing the reactions inside of this imported file that I generated. So I'll first mesh this mat slab. Okay, so we'll, we'll mesh it, and now we're going to analyze, and we'll go to ana analyze structure. I have a few load cases, or excuse me, load combos set up. You can see there's these first five are actually the default combinations that are generated just automatically by ADAPT. They may or may not even apply in this case. And then I also have these combinations that were imported from ETAB. So I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, re, you know, turn off the first five. They they don't apply because number one, um, we don't have any pre-stressing, and I remove the dead and the live reserve load cases, so these are blank. Um, we do want to do one thing though. I, I do want to let me go to the load combos and add the self weight because we want to make sure we include uh, the the self weight. So I'll I this is the self weight that was. Uh, uh, defined in uh, ETABs, but we didn't import that, so I want to delete. The reason it's listed is because it's included in combinations that were imported. And I, I'll go back and I'll assign a factor to the native self-weight for ADAPT. And in this case, what's going to happen when we re reanalyze the mat, and th this is an important point, is when I reanalyze this single level mat, I, the, the only self weight that's going to be included in the analysis will actually be the weight of the mat itself, none of the self weight above. So that obviously that, that's important because you, you have to consider the self weight above. The reason, the, the reason for that is, is I chose not to include the self weight when I imported the, the IMP file, but I have not yet reanalyze the global frame and adapt. Therefore, the only loads that are going to be placed on this slab when I include the reactions, and you'll see here if I if I include the lateral reactions, EQX through wind Y are E tabs. And if I include include the load takedown, dead and live are also from E tabs. So these do not include self-weight at this point. And so that, that's important distinction. If you wanted to include self-weight, again, you would have to import it and assign it as a dead load case. Um, when we import, again, I just arbitrarily chose not to because my reasoning was, well, I'm going to reanalyze this entire frame in ADAPT and therefore I'll account for it using the ADAPT native self-weight. But that hasn't been done at this point. So, so we'll go now and I'm including these reactions. I'll go ahead and say, okay. This is completed, and once once it's done, you know, in evaluating the mat, we might want to check punching shear. We might want to check soil pressure for for um, service level loads. For example, if I look at one of the combinations, I, I'm not sure exactly which one it is, but I could go here to soil pressure and look at the map of soil pressure um, on the structure. Now, this is in PSI, which isn't very useful, but if I change this to PSF and reapply, we, we have 7,000 PSF uh, pressure 
on those wall stacks. You say, well, where are the wall stacks? <laughs> I don't see them. Well, I just have them off in view. If I turn them on, now I'm looking at the wall stack on the slab. Um, so the, I, I've, I've just processed a mat using ETABS reactions inside a builder very easily. And um, we could carry this forward and also design you know, sections. Maybe I wanna know what the reinforcement is for a particular region of the slab. Well, I could go through and, and set up design strips so I can generate maybe a strip. And I'll, let me go back and we're gonna set up, let's say, let's just do X strips for, for an example. So I'll set up a strip here and just replicate that a few times. I'm just manually drawing these, but you could use replication tools to, to generate these strips. So those are my X direction strips. I'll select all of them and change the number of design cuts. Right now, it will only create 12 design cuts between these two points, which is a little bit too coarse. So I will um, modify the strips and say I want to use you know 30 30 design cuts for each one of these strips, and I'll I'll generate the the design tributaries. And then I want to design them. So based on the analysis that I just ran with the load combinations that were used in the process of that, um, we're going to design the design strips. And you can see, again, for combination six, for example, we have some set of actions. These are bending moments. It's actually set to no code check. So in order for us to, um, to obtain reinforcement for this for this particular set of combinations, these all need to be changed. I just forgot to do that, but these would have to be changed to strength or to service in order to to generate um, a design for them. So let, let me change these to strength here for us, so we have something that we can show in terms of reinforcement. And this is also important for uh, column design if we were to redesign this, or if we were to to design the columns using these reactions. Let me expand that window out a bit. Okay, now that I've re-tagged the load combos, I, I'm forced to go back and to re-reanalyze this. So we can reanalyze the the mat. And I'll redesign the strips under FEM, design the, the design cuts. I'm using strips and design cuts kind of interchangeably, <laughs> a little bit loose in the language in terms of the what we're referring to. But um, but anyway, the, the, these again are you know bending moments. If I wanted to look at an envelope of bending moments, I could just envelope the strength. These are my strength. You can see the peak bending is near this this wall here. And then finally, if we wanted to generate reinforcement, we could generate for the envelope of combinations and the program output some top and bottom rebar for my strips. Um, so that, that's one use case of the imported model from ETABS. Now the second use case that we're gonna end up with today will be a rerun of the model using the applied uh, lateral loads. So now, I'll go ahead and cancel here. And this probably is a good time to answer a few questions while we let this run. So let's go ahead and turn back on the entire frame. The reason it's only showing columns is because I had isolated and turned off the view of a few components. Now that I'm wanting to reanalyze the entire structure with the applied load, so I'm not counting necessarily on the imported reactions for my solution, I'm going to use ADAPTS solution to those applied loads. We'll go ahead and we have to mesh the structure. So I'll mesh this automatically. And this will go through and mesh each independent level. And there's going to be a warning. I forgot about that. There's some overlapping openings here. So I'm just going to select my openings. And I'll just delete them <laughs> just for sake of time. The openings are bound out on the edge of the the wall and the, the slab actually cuts around the opening, so there's no real purpose to have the openings. And 
for some reason the openings were duplicated in the ETABS model. So, so I delete them. I'll go back now and remesh the structure again. Okay, this is our mesh, and we've we've already um, basically. I, I've solved this. I know it it solves. So, so I'm going to solve the frame for the combinations that were imported. Now, one little nuance, I guess, that we have to consider is because we introduced a mat at the base, and there's a spring there. When I go to analyze the frame, the program gives me the option, do you want to include the compression springs or do you just want to substitute the springs with fixed supports? So for the sake of time, the second option takes quite a bit longer than the first just due to the nature of the solution and how it's how we come about that. But we're going to substitute the base with fixed supports. And then we once we get a solution, we can go back and do the same thing we did previous, except at that point, we're going to have the ability to select two different solutions, either an ETAB solution or an ADAPT solution. The ADAPT solution that we will be able to select is based on the usage case, and that's defined here. So the default usage case is called uncracked. And all that means is that the stiffness modifiers for the entire structure are set to one. If I generate a customized usage case, maybe I call it drift or foundations or strength, I have the ability to, to select and um, assign different modifiers that are less than one. Uh, so we'll, we'll use the uncracked FEM usage case for this uh, particular run. We're substituting the base, and I'll go ahead now and, um, let me see here. Actually, I'm just gonna do these four because th these combinations one through four, because they only include the lateral load cases, when I rerun the single level mat, they're actually not available to run. I explained that earlier that they're only available in global mode. So we'll just include these combos inside of these combinations here, or I should say these load cases inside of combos five through nine, for example. And we'll go ahead and run that. So this may take a minute or two. Um, if there are any questions, I'll go ahead and just start the, the Q&A now while we're letting this run. Um, so please, if you have questions, I think there's an option where you can just type the question in and, and then I will um, answer those as, as needed. If not, then we'll be on a short pause here. Okay, there's one question. Let me go ahead and grab it. Builder uh, imports. Let me see if I can stretch it out a bit. Okay. Can the 2016 version of Adapt Builder import models in 2016 ETABs? Um, it depends. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 if the IMP file that's generated is compatible with that version of Adapt, then yes, but um, right now, the, the, the IMP file that is created from the integration console is actually not the latest version of the IMP. So to answer the question, Chad, I would say yes. I think the, any, any IMP created through this file should, be, um, should give you the ability to import it into, into Builder 2016. Once, once we update the integration console, which will be v7, at that point, you would actually be required to use Builder 
um, one or two or version 2018 for builder, which has not been released yet. Okay, so this is almost done and um, we're going to, once we obtain the solution, we're going to go back to the mat. The, the previous result for soil pressure, I think for combination six was around 7,000. So we'll just compare that as a uh, something to judge against. So if I now go back to the base level, for example, and I reanalyze the, the mat, I again can include reactions. So I can include lateral reactions or load takedown or both. And right now these are set to solution E tabs, but now I can select the solution as adapt, which is uncracked. And we'll go ahead and do that. Now th this this pressure actually is going to be much higher, I think, because we've included the self weight. Let me see if I can. Um, and I I can't not select that so it has to be selected so so this this should actually give me a higher pressure so it's going to be hard obviously to judge that but we'll go back and rerun this and again rather than to just to illustrate rather than using the e-tabs reactions we're now using the builder reactions so we just resolve this frame that was already solved in e-tabs inside of adapt and if i look at the I think it was combo six, we had looked at the soil pressure for. You can see the soil pressure is 8,073. 8, um, and the, the same pattern generally would, you know, is shown here. Um, one thing I do need to check, th these are actually pretty close. And if, if the self weight had not been considered in that previous run, then th this would be much higher because the self weight makes up a majority of the load in terms of gravity on the on the mat. So um, I need to go back and just review and check to see if that self weight was included inside of uh, the dead load case from from E tabs. And when I do that, um, we'll send out a note to folks who have joined just to clarify that. So that's that's a little bit of a uh, um, uh, question mark in terms of the comparing the, the two different solutions. Um, the last thing that we'll show today is column design. So if you if you if you have the column designer uh, inside of Builder, you have the ability again to design columns relative to the ETABS solution if you wish. So let, let's take one column for example, and I'll just look at this column down here at the base. Right now, the column does not have a section type assigned to it. So that's the first step in any column design process. I need to assign a section type. And I'll do that just by um, going to my modify item properties under columns. And I'm going to create a new design group. And we're going to auto assign a new individual design group to this column. And that column design group is now a 32 by 24 column. The, the, ge the geometry and the reinforcement for that design group can be shown in the type manager. So there's that group that was just created. If we look at that group, we have some reinforcement there that obviously will not work because I think they're number three bars. But um, what I'll do is just change the, the bar size and we'll say this is three and four. Uh, wrong wrong direction there, four and three. And so we, we change the makeup and the composition of the, the section type. So we'll use a number four tie spaced at six inches on center and just call that our design group. Once the design group is set up for an individual column or a group of columns, it could be all of the columns actually in the model, I can go here to FEM, column design options. And I select the combinations that I want to process the design for. Secondarily, I would say, what's my force source? Do I want to include um, FEM results, tributary results, envelope of FEM and tributary? So here we would select what the source is for the design. And um, and also, which analysis governs? Does the global analysis govern or does the single level govern? So we set up our different options and parameters for the column design. And then we would run through um, the design of that particular column. So I would select column design, code check, or design that group. One just checks what 
uh, reinforcement is currently inside of the section. The other one actually will propose a, a new set of reinforcement if the the existing doesn't work in terms of the design. So in this case, we have a situation where um, if I, let's see, I think I code checked it. Uh, let me try this graphically. Give me one moment here. So under column, individual. Yeah, let me try that again. Yeah, for some reason it's not... Um, designing I may have the wrong setting under the column design options so yeah th this is set to tributary method I'll use FEM because that was the previous solution that I had ran and then maybe I change the code also but this would be level analysis not global because the, the, the last run that I made analytically was a single level not a global run so now it should give me a result for the column design Okay, so now it changed the status of the column, and we can go here to the summary. Program would report a summary page for that particular column with the additional, um, or with all the, the, the input loads and minimum moments and so on, but this gives a pretty detailed output for the particular column design. But the, we, we just wanted to show the process for that particular approach. Um, and the point was that we reanalyzed the structure with the applied loads that stemmed from ETABs, and then from those loads and the analysis done in ADAPT, we're able to design the columns. So um, that will conclude the, the main points that we wanted to make with respect to the integration console. Uh, we have about five minutes left, so I'll just open up the rest of the time if there are any other questions. If not, um, we really appreciate everyone here joining us today, and if you have questions, you can contact support at adaptsoft.com. As a reminder, we'll place the video on youtube.com slash adapt support. So again, thank you. And um, we'll open it for questions if there are any now. All right, so it looks like there are no questions, so um, we'll just go ahead and conclude the, the meeting. Um, again, if you think of anything after the fact, just let us know. We would be happy to help out, and I again, I appreciate everyone's attendance. Thank you.